Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the Mohican Sun here in Connecticut, USA. It's the PartyPoker.net PDC US Open coming to you live and exclusive here on Nuts TV. <laughs> our semi final stages. It's time now to meet our players. Firstly, would you please welcome our markers, Scott Gibling and Gary Wood, and the referee in charge of the action is Mr. Russ Bray. Let's meet the players. Firstly, would you please welcome from Arizona, it's the Scorpion, David Fata! Now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome from Essex, England, the former world match play champion and former world number one. It's Jaws, Colin Time to get the action underway and join our commentary team of Alan Warren Little and Stuart Pike. So, a place at stake in the final of the 2008 US Open here at the Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. And if Colin Lloyd could produce the darts that he did against Ronnie Baxter, this could be over very, very quickly. But we know that David Fatham, the Canadian, is a fighter, he's a scrapper. And if Lloyd is off his game, Fatham will certainly fancy his chances, especially after his victory over Chris Mason. Yeah, he's certainly the underdog, but he's earned the right to be here, played in a very big field and got through the other day and then played so well yesterday and today, especially against Chris Mason. Took his chances. If he leaves him a chance, does Colin, I'm sure he'll take it. But I think he'll find it a bit more difficult with Colin's power scoring. Played very well today, 102 average. He's going to find it very, very difficult. Yeah, Lloyd beating Baxter 3-0. Uh, Fatham taking out Chris Mason at 3-1. And uh, Colin Lloyd is, is, is really, really looking like the player that won those two big TV titles, the two PDC majors, the World Match Play at Blackpool and the World Grand Prix in Dublin in 2004, back end of, and then 2005. And he, he just, he just at the moment... Thank you, ladies and looks in the mood, doesn't First he? Set. He had that real First struggle. Set. He had a year, 18 first. months. Game and, on! Uh, it, it all went horribly wrong for him, and uh, he's come back brilliantly. It happens. Darts players, like all sportsmen, have highs and lows, but you've got to give Lloyd credit. Absolutely. He was world number one three years ago and then dropped down to world number 10 or 12. But every sportsman goes through sticky patches. It's just how you cope with it. His confidence was very low. He started to doubt himself, his practice, his preparation. But you just got to stick at it, do the work and get the rewards. Well, Fatum won the throw for the ball in the practice room, so he gets 41. us underway in this semi-final. And uh, apart from the... 7,500 guaranteed for reaching the final. 97. One of these two players will be guaranteed at least another £8,000 because by reaching the final, they're guaranteed a place at the Grand Slam of Darts 16. for the next two years. So, uh, in effect, £15,500 riding on this one game of darts. Yeah, so much to play for. I think Colin will have that at the back of his mind. Please, you'll concentrate on the game. David's obviously been the big story of the tournament so far. Three top players in the other, two players in the other half, and obviously Colin. But David's earned the right, he's played very well. Just needs to start finding his range. Doesn't want to be thinking he's just up there for a bit of fun. 
He's playing for a lot of money, a lot of prestige, and a place in the Grand Slam. Well, this man has been on fire here in Connecticut. 100! Over the last three days. Fifty-seven. Now and again goes downstairs as David, three down to the 19. Obviously wasn't happy with his range on the triple 20. Decided to try and change the throw, but Colin just sticking to his guns. 100. Right. It's been uh, steady as she goes from, uh, from Lloyd in this opening leg. But this is better, isn't it? 120. Well, he just changed the momentum with the throw before by throwing for the 19. Sometimes you have to do that during a game. Thirty-eight. Well, only thirty-eight. Oh. Could so only have one down at the double, so there's chance here for David. Needs to leave a reasonable finish. He may get one down at it. Colin may only have one down at the double to win the first leg. Ninety. Good cover shot. Colin requires sixty-six. Puts a little bit of more pressure on the leg. Two darts at double eighteen to take the first leg. Double nine. Fifty-seven. David, you require 86. Well, it just shows you how much a game can play. Never missed anything in the quarterfinal. Semi-final is a different game. First chance here for David. Is he going to take it? Triple 18. 18 for the bull. Bull's eye for the first leg. Well, it was a long way off there. Colin, you require well, nine. One way for Lloyd here. Big one and double four. He's already missed two darts to take this opening leg of the semi final. Third first time lucky. And, uh, Lloyd takes that first Second leg, leg takes it against the throw, and first. here he is now Game throwing on. for the first set. Yeah, small chance there for David, albeit the bullseye. If it hit the triple 18, may have had two darts at the double. These are the points in the game early on in the match that can change the momentum. Especially against the throw. Noticeable though, in, in, in that quarter final against Baxter, I would say probably nine times out of ten. Lloyd's first dart was absolutely spot on in the treble 20 and invariably followed up with 100, just like that. But on a few occasions in this semi final so far, that first dart just dipped below the bed and that's the angle that Colin Lloyd doesn't like. As soon as his first dart goes underneath the treble, he has to go down for cover. Yeah, and that's what we talk about range. When you get your range, you find so you're comfortable. You're comfortable where you stood, your stance. Seems very happy with his throw at the moment. It's better to be above the treble than below it. All they have is moved downstairs. 